Hodor. Okay, I'm done. Hello, Hall H. How are you doing? You good? <laughs> wow, I never thought I would be here. I am so pleased to be here. This is going to be a panel slightly different. I'm going to do things quite informally. We're all friends here, aren't we? I want to picture yourself. You're watching Game of Thrones on your sofa. Close your eyes. Think about all the questions you want to ask us. So you've got yourself in that really relaxed place. Ready? <laughs> so put your hand on your heart. Got your eyes closed. Put your hand on your wallet. <laughs> Bring it up to me. <laughs> I'll look after it. <laughs> no, don't do that. Okay. These are all my friends, guys. These are the people I've worked for six years with on what I think is the best show that's ever been created. And the first guest, I'm sad to say, has been a monkey on my back. <laughs> for six years. Yeah, that's, that's my phone actually. What the hell's going on here? There, that's better. Ladies and gentlemen, my very good friend and little brother, Isaac Hempstead Wright. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Bradley. <laughs> the amazing Natalie Emanuel. Liam Cunningham. It's crazy introducing these guys. I've known them since they were like eight years old. It's so scary. Sophie Turner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jacob Anderson. My fellow countryman, Conleth Hill. <laughs> Alfie Allen. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Gwendolyn Christie. Hello guys, you all look ravishing, absolutely ravishing tonight. So I'm just going to start the questions. We'll start the questions, we'll start the questions. Gwen, I'm going to start with you. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hall H. <laughs> okay, we have seen, we have seen Tormund make a play for Brienne. Yeah. I actually have a theory that I think Brienne and Hodor would make a really good couple. <laughs> I've always held a candle for that. <laughs> <laughs> a very small one. A very small one. Okay, we have seen Tormund make a play for Brienne, who seems to be rebuffing his advances. Do you think she secretly enjoys being appreciated as a woman and a warrior? Good question. Well, I think it's really... What I love about Brienne of Tarth is that I don't think that at the foremost of her consciousness is a value system that's based on how men appreciate her. But, I mean, who doesn't like being appreciated as both, really? But I, I, don't, I don't think that's really what she's invested in at all. I think she's finding it incredibly awkward. But underneath any awkwardness is always that potential secret enjoyment. <laughs> what do you all think? Does she like it? Or does she like someone else? Oh, hello. <laughs> wow. Who? <laughs> what are you saying? Okay. 
Wow. Oh, Jamie, yeah. What? Alfie. Which one's They're that? saying you love Jamie. Firstly, Which what do you call that? your dog? What's the name of the dog? Her name is Abby. That is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I really want it. <sighs> what was it like for you to return to the character of Theon after such a torturous run as Reek? Um, I'd say it was, it was definitely a challenge. Um, I'd say that he wasn't really kind of stepping into the, the Theon that he was before he, he was turned into Reek. Um, but yeah, he's just, uh, he's had definitely a crazy arc of many of the characters on the show. His has been one of the, the craziest, but it's, um, it's just been enjoyable, you know, to be able to yeah. find empathy for a character such as him. Amazing. Thank you, Alfie. <laughs> Conleth. <laughs> We have never actually had an opportunity to act together, which is terrible. Um, many of your fellow cast cite how difficult it can be to keep from laughing while filming with you. Do you purposefully make them laugh? No. And is there an actor who makes you laugh? Uh, they all make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes <clears throat> they know it, but mostly they don't. But Dinklage would make me laugh a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some pretty funny people in the cast, that's for sure. Not you. <laughs> yeah. you. You're awful. <laughs> Jacob. Hello. Hi. Hi. So that's not how I speak. <laughs> I don't know. Hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Is it true uh, that we've seen Grey Worm being a bit flirtatious with Masindai? And do you see a future for them? I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think there's already there's things fire in between them there's 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 chemistry right oh yeah i think um <laughs> oh, yeah. i i want those kids to be happy i want them to find happiness with each other everything's so sad <laughs> in it's never gonna happen man <laughs> nothing's ever gonna be happy you know that don't you? <laughs> seriously <laughs> but do you think daenerys would approve of that relationship yeah yeah. I think she'd, she'd like, she'd do the wedding. She'd like, <laughs> which you don't call a wedding, do you? It's not bingo. But she'd, uh, yeah, I think she'd be involved. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> not involved. Just. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a completely different show. <laughs> okay. I think you would all watch it, though, wouldn't you, totally? <laughs> Sophie. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Is, so shut up. Is Sansa being manipulated by Littlefinger, or is she playing the long game? Uh, good question. Um, yeah. I think initially, you know, there was definite manipulation uh, on Littlefinger's part, but, you know, as Sansa has grown and been, you know, a prisoner by all of these master manipulators, especially Littlefinger, she's been silently absorbing and learning and adapting and... Um, in my opinion, she's just as good at playing the game as he is at this point. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I love it. Liam. Hello. <laughs> Look at this. A rose between two thorns. <laughs> uh, oh, don't say that. Go ahead. Ask the question. <laughs> At the end of last season, Davos found out about Miss... I can't even read this. I really need to wear my glasses. Melisandre's part in Shireen's death. Jon Snow banished her from the north, and Davos said he would kill her if she ever returned. Do you think he would? And does he have it in him to murder someone in cold blood? I think that's a good question. I don't, I don't think he's the vindictive type. I think uh, if he was on the road taken a long weekend somewhere, and in the opposite direction, he saw a lady in a red cape approaching. I think there's a good chance he'd whip out a Glock <laughs> and pop a couple of caps in her ass. <laughs> but I, I don't think he'd, he'd hunt her down. I don't think he'd do an area. I don't think he's got a list. <laughs> but uh, but I, I definitely think he'd, uh, he'd put her in a shallow grave somewhere if no one was gonna find out. God. <laughs> but that's Fine just up. me. Can, can you just quickly show us how you'd hold a Glock? Yeah, I hold a sideways man, like in a hood. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. Natalie. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I 
there was a great scene with Tyrion and Grey Worm last season when Tyrion was uh, exhorting you both to drink. Yeah, Missandei got a little. We bit. saw them. <laughs> <laughs> we saw them that Missandei and Grey Worm were growing, uh, growing closer. Yeah. How do you hope that storyline pans out? I feel quite similarly to Jacob. I'm like, I want these guys to be happy and, you know, <coughs> just stay together. I think they've come through so much atrocity. Yeah. So to see them laugh together and, like, feel something for another person is so beautiful. And I've really enjoyed portraying that journey. And I, I hope we get to see it blossom more. And maybe there might be a happy ending for them. I, I daren't say it, just in case. Because <laughs> uh, of death. Mine, yeah, I know how it feels. I know how it feels. <laughs> <laughs> John. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sam has always considered himself a bit of an outsider. Yeah. Have Gilly and baby Sam given him a sense of belonging? I didn't write these, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's absolutely always been an outsider. He was an outsider from the day he was born at home because his father considered him to be such a disappointment and treated him with such contempt. Then he was removed to Castle Black, where he was an outsider again. And then he said, well, the one place I can be really accepted is the Citadel. That's the one place I can go where my passions and interests aren't treated with scorn yeah. and contempt. They're the place where, uh, it's a place where people have an understanding and an appreciation of knowledge. And, and this is gonna be the place where I feel accepted for the first time in my life. Gets there, He's just as much as an outsider there as he is anywhere else because they make him do all those jobs that you saw him doing. <laughs> and and it, it's interesting that you know, people say, how is him being at the Citadel going to affect his relationship with Gilly, given the fact that they've grown so close over the years, but that was when Sam didn't have thousands and thousands of books as a distraction from his relationship. So I, I think that, that as time has gone on, Sam has worked out, as a lot of people work out in relationships, that... Your, your kind of sphere of interest shrinks and you no longer want to be necessarily accepted by a wider world or even a wider community because you know what's important and important is being loved by two people rather than accepted by hundreds. Yeah. Good answer, good answer, man. This is a very important question. Do you miss me? Oh. <laughs> No, yeah. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> no, it's been so empty without you on set this year. Ooh, such a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. He's making me say this. Help me. <laughs> no. Mr. Okay, this actually is a question which, you know, as a fan of the show, and I've been there for six years, what the hell's name is that three-eyed raven about? <laughs> the the three-eyed raven. What the hell is that about? <laughs> well. <laughs> I want an in-depth <laughs> An analysis. Like a Wikipedia um, page. What, what's interesting about the Three-Eyed Raven is he's one of the, the sort of few fragments um, that remain of, of the old Westeros, of the, the, the ancient kind of magical, mystical side of it. Um, so what exactly his purpose is, I, I, I don't think has, has been revealed yet, but... Uh, Clearly, it's something important. Um, there's been the Night King is 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 uh, appears to be his sworn enemy, so he must have some important role to play. So for Bran this season, especially, it's quite exciting that he is now the Three-Eyed Raven. And, and so you don't know then? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> that's my rambling way of, of saying that. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's very very informative. Thank you. <laughs> right. This is for everybody, and I'm going to start right at, back down at the end with. Um, Gwendolyn, I like this question. If you ended up on the Iron Throne, what would be the first law you would pass? Oh, oh no. <laughs> what would be the first law I would pass? The women could be knights. <laughs> yeah. Make a nice change. Same question to you, Alfie. Um, I would say the, the um, 
uh, the, the, the brotherhood that Beric Dondarrion is part of be, be made uh, allowed throughout the land so everyone can come back to life. <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> Tom, the uh, that Comic Cons are free. Nice. Jacob? Uh, free poppies for everyone. <laughs> that one. And, I want and, that one. And also some sort of uh, device where, where we can create unicorns to exist. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how that would work. but Everybody needs unicorns. We can do that. We all need unicorns. Yeah. Sophie? God, this is really tough. The first thing that comes to mind is just like unlimited carbohydrates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But that's what I want. Fair enough. <laughs> I think in selected outlets all over Westeros, there should be free Dornish wine for all the inhabitants of oh, Westeros. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're welcome. I think Masande would probably want, and I would quite like, you know, language lessons for everyone. So we can all be <laughs> bilingual and cool. Education. Yeah. Education. Education for everyone. So that's a really serious answer, but also true how I feel. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How about um, maesters have to clean out their own stinking bedpan? <laughs> 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 Number one. <laughs> um, I I'd set up a, a holiday scheme for all the characters who have only filmed in the cold places to go and film in the warm places. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I second that. Yeah. <laughs> I second that. Okay. Moving back to the individual questions. Oh, what about me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would make it illegal for one person to mount another and be carried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you finished that sentence. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and every time you have to say thank you, which you never did. <laughs> it's not true. It's not true. Yeah, okay, it is. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Gwendolyn, you're always my first. <laughs> you're last, you're everything. <laughs> okay. What do you think drives Brienne to never give up on her quest to protect the Starks? I think that the relationship between Brienne and Catelyn Stark was a moment where Brienne realized strength in another woman. I remember quite fervently that line, you have to Catelyn Stark, you have strength. Uh, not a man's strength, but a woman's strength. And I think it was that realization that Brienne didn't have to force herself into a mold of masculinity. She didn't have to take the path of men before her in order to be taken seriously or, or to do good, that she could be propelled by her own intuitive sense of, of what was right in terms of a moral compass. And I think that there's something very beautiful about the way she's projected that into the future, that it doesn't matter if someone lives or dies, that that goes into that person's daughters. And it is significant that they are her daughters, to return the Stark girls home. And in her own way, I think that Brienne feels that even if it's one small thing for one person or two people, that that's going to perpetuate a sense of good, which maybe subconsciously creates a greater sense of equality. And that's what I think is driving her. It's she's connecting to a, an idea that's greater than herself. Wow. Well. And this is, why, this is why, ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever seen me at one of these, my answers for basically every question is always Brienne of Tarth. <laughs> yeah, you would be the queen I would put on the throne. Aww. So that's why. That's why. So, okay. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Alfie. I love, I love you. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Alfie, <laughs> as a true Aaron Bourne, 
How comfortable is Theon with the fact that he has forsaken his way of life to be on Team Daenerys in it? Um, I think uh, that, the, that Yara is really kind of deciding the, uh, the, 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 the journey they take now with their new leadership with Daenerys. So um, I'd say that it's definitely an equal partnership between the two of them, but I, I would say he's just excited to see where this new leadership takes them, yeah. being led by Daenerys and Yara. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> 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 Conneth, yeah. how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Varys is rarely rattled. What do you think scares him? <clears throat> I think the economic outlook. <laughs> um, I, we, well, something, whatever that sorcerer said. We, you know, we saw him with the Red Priestess. Where he, where it was one of the few times where he looked a bit, what? Because mm. she was cray. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's that's you know he's he, he survived so much, but that's the one thing we don't know what was said, and and because of your experience with you know words and hold the door and everything, I think oh God, I'm going to be holding a door for someone, <laughs> and that's what the sorcerer said. So that's the only thing I'm kind of you know there's yeah. some mystery there that I still don't know what that's about, what was said, and what it means. Well, my advice when it comes to holding doors is don't. Or, a, <laughs> so. uh, or get a, a swing door or yeah. something. <laughs> it never ends well. <coughs> Jacob. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Some of you, some of you out there, may know Jacob is also a very talented musician. Woo! Woo! Oh. Thank you. Uh, How do you balance both sides of your career? Um, I, I kind of don't. I have like I'm really lucky <laughs> um, that I've I've got like we the way we shoot the show is kind of over a period of I don't know why I'm telling you this <laughs> the way we shoot the show is it's like it's like six months and then we're all kind of in and out kind of revolving doors sorry when was that trigger <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, so I just whenever I'm not in Belfast or or a sunny place. Um, <laughs> just rub it in, man. Just yeah. rub it in. You I talk just... about doors. You're talking about the sunshine. <laughs> the right songs. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not been too bad actually. It's not been hard. Yeah. I mean, it could my my life could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, Sorry, I can relate. I'm really well. nervous, by the way. This is like I'm I'm at home here, but for some reason I feel really nervous. Why don't you <laughs> give us a Jacob rendition of your song? <laughs> um, what song do you want to hear? Uh. Uh, that one. Oh, not one of my songs. You want to hear one of my songs? Oh, take, like, yeah. uh, I thought yeah. it might calm your nerves. Uh, okay. Calm your nerves. Calm your nerves. Beautiful. Every time. <laughs> Is that you shutting me up? <laughs> yeah. It was about to get really, really exciting. I was about to go into like a... a uh, medley. Yeah, medley. Medley. Bohemian. <laughs> I just, that was just Edelweiss, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So there, <laughs> calm your nerves. Copyright. <laughs> Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know, I know what it's about. I know what it's about balancing two careers. I was, I was like actually DJing until like 2 a.m. last night. I don't balance. I just, I just do it. Yeah. That's what you do, isn't it? You just do yeah. it. Yeah. Sophie. Hi. Hi. Does Sansa retain any of her ideas about love, marriage, and being happy? Or is she now of the opinion that men are just after her for what she can get or what they can get? Uh, I don't think, um, I don't think she's like season one Sansa and she's particularly looking for, <laughs> she's not really looking for a relationship or love at the moment. I think she's kind of done with that. Um, I think, you know, she's always on the search for happiness, but she doesn't really see the world through rose tinted glasses anymore, you know? Um, she sees the reality of the situation. In terms of like seeing men, um, in a different light... I think she sees the world in a different light. I don't think men in particular. I think she... <laughs> <laughs> what? You've broken that man's heart. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, of course, she's, you know, she's just kind of... She's woke now, guys. She's real woke. Um, you know, uh, she's cautious. She trusts no one, um, whether it be man or woman. 
whether a family member or not, she trusts no one. And I think that's important uh, when you play the Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, nice. Liam. Yes. Do you think Davos misses his smuggling days uh, when life is simpler and he is able to live by his wits? Yeah, and that's a kind of an interesting question because him being promoted from small time criminal to uh, being sucked into this web, this game, there's very little room. I think it reflects real life. When people end up in powerful positions, it's, it, you can't have a simple life anymore. It's very difficult to be just happy. You're playing games. You're paranoid. Who's out to get you? The whole, the whole thing. But I think he feels he has a responsibility to be there to try and keep whoever it may be on the right track. Um, because he's decent and he's loyal and he, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, have that addiction for this horrible drug that is power. So his, his head is kind of, his head is a, a little bit clearer than some. Um, but I, I, do, I, I do like the guy's, I, I love the guy's simplicity. It's, he, he is who he is and he's, he's not a complicated character. And, and uh, it's really nice to do that. It's really nice to play somebody like that and play those little colors and all that. I really, I really love this character. Yeah. I think that's one of the special things about George R. R. Martin's writing, that every single character, even, no matter how small they are, is completely multi-layered. We all get such a, it's a great... What do you mean small? <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I don't mean you. <laughs> I only had one word. I don't think I can <laughs> compete. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Natalie. We know that Masindai owes a debt to Daenerys as she freed her from slavery. Do you think Daenerys should have made Masindai her hand instead of Tyrion? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know about that. That would be cool. Um, I'd love to play that. But I think, you know, Tyrion knows the enemy. He is much more experienced with being a hand. He, and that sort of political landscape. I think Masindai has come from a completely different world. She's been dealing with a completely different set of dangers, but like she, you know, this sort of strategizing and negotiating this very cutthroat world all of a sudden is, is, is so new. So I think Tyrion is probably the better candidate for hand, and I fully support him in that role. Although it would be super cool to be like, hand to like your bestie, you know, like, <laughs> he's like girl powered you know, double team, like, it'd be really fun. I think he would have made an awesome hand, actually. Oh, well, thank you. TBH. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> John. Mm -hmm. When Samuel was a member of the Night's Watch, yeah. Jon Snow was his constant protector. Yeah. How much of an influence do you think Jon still has over him? And how much does Samuel want to please Jon? Um... Um, uh, Sam, no, no, sorry. Sam arrived at Castle Black uh, completely bereft of any positive male role model in his life. And indeed, the positive female role model that he had had been very cruelly taken away from him. So what he found in Jon Snow in that moment was everything he possibly needed all kind of wrapped up in one person. He was, he was a big brother. He was, a, he was a father figure, he was a confidant, he was a best friend. Very. He was all of these things. And Sam knew what it was like to be saved by somebody. He knew what it was like to be saved by Jon Snow and knew what it was like to have somebody take the burden of you on their shoulders. <laughs> and when he found Gilly, he found somebody in even more kind of emotional dire straits than he was, who had a life of systematic sexual abuse laid out in front of her, and the, the worst possible life you can imagine. So he knew what it was like to be saved at that point. So he wanted to do that for somebody else. He wanted, to, he wanted to save this girl and her son because he knows how important that can be. It was like John handed the baton on to Sam. And, and Jon Snow was kind of everything to Sam, and now they've, they've gone on their separate paths because Sam wants to please him so much because he wants to fight the same battle as Jon Snow. He wants to stand shoulder to shoulder with Jon Snow in the Great War, but he knows that he can't do that on the battlefield. He knows that he has to do that using his very unique set of skills, which is 
academia and learning and, and applying knowledge. He, he, the Citadel is his battlefield. And so John sent him there, and now he has, he has the responsibility to make John's faith in him justified and get John results. He knows it's a race against time. He needs to get in there, find out whatever piece of information he needs to find out, get back up to the north and give it to Jon Snow. That's, that's what he, and he feels that responsibility all the time. He, he knows he's got a huge debt to repay to John, and he feels that very strongly. And fingers crossed he does just that, right? Isaac, in certain spiritual traditions, the third eye refers to the gate that leads to inner realms and spaces of higher consciousness. Do you think that applies to the three-eyed raven? It's all about the raven. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think in many ways it does, because I've always said that if I could have any superpower, it would be to be all-knowing, and that's exactly what Bran is now. Um, he's he's learnt with the original Three-Eyed Raven, and now he has access to like this vast encyclopedia of all of history. Um, and not only can he just read someone's perspective of it, he can actually exist there in that time and, and watch it happen. So if that's not one of the deepest and, and most interesting realms there is, then, I, then I'm not sure what, what, what is. This is obviously very important, this question. Gwendolyn, if there were one character, Hodor, that you wish hadn't been killed, Hodor. <laughs> Who would it be, Hodor? <laughs> well, I mean, there's two people, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> One is someone who was a magnificent presence in the series, who happens to be hosting this panel. <laughs> And also Catelyn Stark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fake answer, real answer. <laughs> <laughs> Alfie. Um, who would I like to be brought back to life? Yeah, pretty much. Um, oh, uh, I would say... <sighs> Carl Drogo. I like Carl Drogo. <laughs> Carl Drogo. <laughs> Definitely. Carl Drogo. Carl Drogo. <laughs> I'm uh, Catelyn, uh, and you. Oh, you have to say that. Don't say that. Okay, not you. <laughs> <laughs> Catelyn and... No, you. I'm, I'm still hurting about Ned. Yeah. <laughs> still breaks my heart. It takes a while to get over that one. I also have a, a flame for Barristan Somi. Oh, we're not for Barristan. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I just really loved working with Jack Gleason so much that I have to say Joffrey. He was so <laughs> fun to hate. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He was such a good husband. <laughs> Very generous man. <laughs> That's popular, yeah, right? I, I have no choice. I have to say, my baby girl, Shireen. Aww. That still hurts, big time. I think I am still heartbroken about Hodor. Like, I still, I honestly just can't quite put it into words. But I, you know, I just love your, your guys' like, whole thing. So I, I think my answer is, is Hodor. Like, genuinely. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, two answers again. First and foremost, the, kind of, the legitimate answer is Rob Stark. Yeah. And the second answer is, if there's one character that I wish they hadn't killed, it'd be Jon Snow, just to say was having to talk about it every five minutes for a year. <laughs> That, that whole year was pretty that, bad. That, right? was a, that was a pretty crummy year. <laughs> that was pretty rough. Yeah, you know, I actually got in the newspapers about that. Someone asked me for like the 37th time that hour, is Jon Snow coming back? Yeah. And I just lost it. I was just like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> uh, and um, the next day in the paper, it said, Christian Nairn hates Kit Harrington. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Isaac. 
Yeah, you'd be very careful. <laughs> Jay! Shut up. <laughs> yeah, actually, some of the direwolves. <laughs> I bring Matt Hodor. <laughs> I don't even like the direwolf. <laughs> No, used to abuse and kick it and everything, didn't you? <laughs> you had the right. legs, actually, so you couldn't really kick it. <laughs> After so much time working on Game of Thrones, are you ready to act in a comedy, a rom-com, or a musical? And would you like to act or direct? Or? Uh, I feel like Game of Thrones incorporates rom-com, musical, you know? <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I like the dark, um, gritty stuff, but I... Uh, I don't know if I could do comedy after all this. I'm in a very dark place in my life. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can oh. second that. She is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Alfie. Yes. Would you like to be in a rom-com or would you like to act or direct? Or, I, I know you love know nothing I, more than to be in a rom-com. Nothing more. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, to... to just any anything that comes my way, not even um, you know. I'll, I'll just I'll just you know take anything on. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> directing is something that would definitely interest me without a doubt. Yeah, yeah. cool man. Gwen, I'm desperate to do a musical. <laughs> Please, someone put me in a musical. Yeah. With a kind of Marlena Dietrich kind <clears throat> of gender bending sort of song and dance. Uh, cabaret type thing. Maybe. Um, if I ask this question, I'll, I'll prerequisite. I, I won't ask you to prove it, but can you sing? Can she sing? I don't know this. I don't know the answer. So. That, the jury's out on that small <laughs> aspect of doing a musical. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear they can do all sorts with technology these Autism. days. <laughs> 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 it's called miming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Isaac. I'd like to be in Game of Thrones, the comedy rom-com musical. Oh, wow. I think How'd that, that go? I, I, well, it, it would just be a comedy rom-com musical. Uh, and what more well, the White Walkers would come out behind the door and like tap dance. Yeah. I mean, you could have all sorts of different musical numbers. It's, it's ripe for a musical adaptation. Shall we do it? Yeah. <laughs> David and Dan. We're just the people to do it. You play the piano, I play the guitar. We can what? do this. There are so many music. Yeah, we've got like a whole band here, actually. <clears throat> John. Um, when I was 13 years old, I played Potiphar, the plum role of Potiphar, in uh, Joseph and his amazing technical dream coat at school. Wow. Oh. Couldn't sing then, can't <laughs> sing now. Absolutely stormed it somehow then. Oh, nice. It, so it'd be interesting to see how standards have risen over time. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested in reprising my iconic role as Potiphar awesome. on the London stage for a hefty old fee. <laughs> <laughs> Liam. Uh, I'd love to do some comedy. I did, I did a lot of comedy on stage before I started this television business. Um, but I'm with Peter Dinklage. P Peter Dinklage was asked, uh, what did he think, how did he think the last episode should go? And uh, he thinks the last episode of the entire show should be a musical. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a brilliant idea. We're, we're breaking the norms with television. Let's go that way. <laughs> Let, let's finish with a high-kicking number around the, <laughs> around the throne. Why not? I'd watch it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> who have I not asked? That's the danger of doing it this way. I've forgotten who I've asked. Come with. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to take a rest and let other people uh, do rom-coms, comedies, and what was the other one? Musicals. Musicals. Oh, no, they're not yeah, getting the music. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've done it all. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jacob. Jacob. Um, yeah, I, I want to I make films, but... Um, that but wasn't that wasn't an option. Rom com, <laughs> comedy. <laughs> no, but you also said. Let me do that again for you. Okay, I'll do it again. I'm like super greedy. I want to do everything. <laughs> um, yeah, I. It's quite. This is quite a hard show to follow. Like, what do you do? I, I'm a like master spearsman now. Mm. This that's hard. 
I know, so I just want to do like hard things. So I guess like a comedy or a rom com would be quite hard. I do want to, you know, because there's there's talk of spin offs of the show. I just want to put my hat in the ring now and just say, <laughs> I really like the idea. I've been talking to Daniel Portman, who plays Pod, and we've been talking about a sort of side call to the show where Grey Worm and Pod and maybe Diana Harris. Um, a cyborg? Side call. Oh. It's like. So, so when you're not sitting, but you get like cameos, like Brienne would come in and be like, okay. hey, as what? a cyborg, as That's a cyborg, yeah, I want that. sure, okay. sure, yeah, what? But it would uh, let's go with the cyborg space. version. I want the cyborg version. <laughs> <laughs> the Borg invaded Westeros. Could we do that, please? <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, I can announce that the uh, HBO spinoff has already been decided. It's going to be called Better Call Davos. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. And good night. <laughs> Natalie. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm sort of open to all things. I'm, I'm, I don't like to be absolutist about anything. Like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that because you never know what comes yeah. into your, you know, email inbox. You know, you're like, oh, that's a good script, or that would be a fun thing to do. I actually started off doing musicals. Um, so I am so open to doing a musical. Whether I can sing as well as I should, I mean, uh, you know, but I'd give it a go. Yeah. And, you know, other stuff, like I'd love to, I'd, I've already sort of attempting to write things and I'd love to be behind the camera too. So I'm sort of just like going with the flow. Awesome. I think we've had some really good ideas for a, a Borg musical in Westeros. I'm going to start working on that right away. And now we're going to open up the floor to you guys, which is the most important part of the panel, I feel. Which crowd is crazier? The Game of Thrones crowd or Star Wars? You're out and I want to be kind of People always ask me this. And I can't really, I, I mean, I should have come up with a better answer by now, really. There's absolutely no excuse. Um, I don't think it's a, I mean, it's not really a craziness, but the level of passion is pretty much equal. And I'm hugely lucky to be involved with both projects, to be involved with a project. What is noticeable is Star Wars is something that many of us have grown up with that gives us actually what I feel is a sense of home about Star Wars. That's how I feel. I feel like I've come home. And it's amazing the way Game of Thrones is seven, we're going into the seventh season now, but there's a similar feeling, actually, which I think is match of, of the passion and love. And I look forward to the resonance of Game of Thrones carrying on through people's lives. So they still have, they have that same feeling of, of home and love for it. Thank you very much. Hello, Hi. my name's Lila from San Diego. And I just want to say your show is the best show on television right now. Thank it's you. amazing. I love it. Thank you. And my question is for Sophie. Um, how's your relationship with, your, with John now that you've reunited? And also, since you're running low on brothers lately, <laughs> I have a proposition for you. Can I be a Stark? Uh. Yeah, you can. You're a Stark. Um, Woohoo! Yeah! We have a new Stark. <laughs> easy as that. See, I didn't realize it was that easy to replace brothers. Um, uh, first question was... Oh, right. Um, John and Sansa. Uh, I've forgotten the question. What was it? Does anyone remember uh, the question? Back together again. Back together again. How does, it, it, feel? Again. How does it, it feel? How's the relationship? Oh, that's right. Um, uh, it's, it's, you know, there's still that kind of sibling rivalry from back when they were very young and they reunited and um, there's still kind of those, those kind of, uh, that sexism that's just ingrained in the culture where the men are the, the fighting figures and the women just kind of say nothing when really Sansa is politically, especially to do with Battle of the Bastards, was very, um, she, she was very knowledgeable about how to deal with the situation, deal with the Boltons. And so it's about them finding that balance um, and 
finding that collaboration, but it, it's, it's proving quite difficult. He's the military man, she's the politician, but I think they both need to realize that they need to stop fighting for ultimate power and just work together. This is for uh, Gwendolyn. Now, Tormund, he seems to have only one move with the ladies, which is like the same move I have, which is a creepy smile. <laughs> <laughs> so what else would Tormund, what else could he do to get in Brienne's chainmail? Wash. <laughs> well, let's not forget, Tormund does certainly have his, very well put, creepy smile. He also enjoys masticating food at Brienne, as we saw him really going down on that chicken leg. Uh, it didn't do much for her, did it? Um, I think really it's about, really, uh, in order to win Brienne's heart, it's about a mutual respect that isn't about any sort of overpowering or sexual advance. It has to be about a mutual respect that's born out of skill and, uh, and a nobility about your ideals. And you think that's going to happen with Torment? <laughs> yeah, mutual well, respect. Well, it's not going to happen right. with you. Oh. <laughs> you know, you, may, you might get lucky. <laughs> there are kids better, here. Better, there are I'll kids here. Coat. So tell me. It, it talks. <laughs> it speaks. Drag, dragons, dire wolves, and three-eyed ravens cannot save you. So are you looking forward to rising again as the children of the cold? <laughs> Is that a mic drop? I, I, I didn't hear... The... Nobody knows what you said, dude. <laughs> yeah. The step out of character for a second. The first time we've heard the Night King's speech. Speak. <laughs> Are you looking forward to rising again as the children of the cold? Oh, that's a great question. We don't have much choice in the matter, do we? Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> Is, I didn't realize the Night King was Californian. <laughs> hey, I'm from Philadelphia. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> It, 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 it's the makeup made it made you sound like you were from the valley. <laughs> I'm only out here because of the Marine Corps. <laughs> That's why the Night King's formidable. He was in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Thank you, dude. You look incredible. Yeah. Yeah, you do, man. Beautiful costume. Well